In today's tutorial, we are going to be doing a map animation. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it and I want to add some cute little details to it. But without further ado, let's hop straight into After Effects and get cracked with it. So in here, I have a 1920 by 1080 composition, 24 frames per second as per usual. I've already added my map, which is very large. I got it from one of the sources I talked about in my um, websites for designers video. So go check that out. The map itself is 6.7 thousand by 9,641 pixels. So it's very nice and high res. It's also a TIFF format, you know, so it's just, you know, it's 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 a high res scan, as you can see. I mean, we can zoom in a good bit and it's got some pretty good details. Other than that, I've added some clouds overhead that I've just found. Let's hop into actually making the animation. It's going to be somewhat simple, but it's a very clean way of showing off a map if you need to be using that. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-comp this and I'm just going to name it map and I'm going to turn it into 3D and then turn on this button here, which is continuously rasterize, I think. Yep. So basically what that means is just it's going to keep the scale and we can add some more things to it. Um, but it's not too important. Just make sure you turn it on and then make sure that you are using the classic 3D renderer and not the Cinema 4Ds. That way we can get some nice depth of field. Going into our composition here, it's of course just going to make a 1920 by 1080 composition. So what we want to do is click on this so we can see the res. I'm going to go down here and hit Command K, which is going to bring on my composition settings. And then I'm just going to change the size of it to fit the size of the map. 6,717 by 9,641. I'm going to click enter. So now our composition is the size of the map. This will take a little bit of computing power just because it is such a large uh, composition. Now I'm going to take a couple of these clouds. You can just pick out some that you think look really good. I just dragged in the ones I have. We'll just be using three clouds. That'll be fine. I'm going to turn 3D on for all of these. I open the two view mode and I want to take these and drag them out ever so slightly from the map itself so they're not on the same plane. I need to scale them down a lot, 8%. I think I want them over here by the little harbor. I'm going to select all of them and then I'm just going to move them up here and then I'm going to hit R to bring up my rotation and then I'm going to take the X rotation and just rotate it ever so slightly to very close to 90 degrees. I'm gonna do a little bit less than 90, maybe 80, or even have one be 90 and another be, let's do 95, just to get a little bit of variation. From there, I wanna scatter them out a little bit. So I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna move it back a little bit. And this can be a bit tricky, so just go and play with it however you want make sure you've got it set up pretty good maybe scale it up a little bit more and the same with this one hit shift p if you want to bring up the position parameter so now we have something that looks like that you can even go in here and then pick bottom so you can kind of see how high off they are of the off the ground so i'm going to select all of them and move them downwards a little bit because we don't want them to be too high up either we can always go in maybe have this one Move it back, move it to the left a little bit. That's pretty good, I think, for the layout so far anyway. So you can turn back one view mode. And as you can see, we have them right over here. So going back into our main composition here, where we have our actual map. If I move this around, you can see it's we've got we've got everything here and it's even in 3D. So if I hit R, I can rotate it however I want. And it's just, of course, going to rotate around the anchor point. So just be mindful of that. I think I want to add a camera. So down here, you can just right click camera and then i'm going to set it to a 50 millimeter camera and i'm going to set the f-stop to let's do 1.8 for some nice depth of field we can always change that later if need be open this up and we want the camera options and also that and also our map actually for this one we just want the position and rotation now if i go to the beginning i want to zoom out a little bit maybe even give it a slight tilt just like that i'm going to keyframe the position and the rotation of everything. Go about two seconds forward and let's zoom in and to rotate it a little bit more. Wanna get it pretty flat so we can get, you know, have the clouds look nice. Zoom in a little bit more. And I don't like the placement of the clouds, so we can always go back in and move that around. So if I move this one out left, this one out to the right, have this one scoop back a little bit, maybe more in the middle. Go back in, see how that looks 
raise this one up a little bit. What does that look like? I'm not a fan. Command Z that. This is just where you can have fun and don't be scared to have fun because at the end of the day, that's the most important part about doing these animations. That looks pretty decent. So now we have this little animation where it comes in. Now this is pretty solid. I want to add a little bit more flair to it. One way of doing that is I'm going to keyframe the position of the camera and also the X or all the rotations really because we're just going to play around and see what looks good and go forward a little bit further than where our other animation ends and then play around with the parameters to get a look that you like. The camera works in a little bit of a weird way so don't be scared to kind of mess with it and just see what kind of looks you can get and spread this animation out just a little bit more because we want it to be very smooth. Next thing we're going to do is the focus distance. I've covered this before, but keyframe it at the very beginning, go to two view mode and I'm going to change this to left so we can see our camera. So you can see our camera is here. Focus distance at the moment is right here. Click on it. I can go in and change it. And again, as I've mentioned before, the pink line is the focus point. So as you can see, as soon as that pink line hits that, our layer is in focus. Go forward until the end of our animation and adjust. So now we bring it way, way back. You can see our clouds are all right there. So we want to match this pink box to it. So now we've got this in focus, which is perfect. Go back into a one view mode. Playing that back, this is what we have. And it's a little bit um, jittery. It's not feeling very smooth. So we can, of course, hit U to bring up all our keyframes, select them, go into flow in this case, and hit, in this case, I'm going to use slow, sexy speed. That's, again, it's just a plugin I've made. Use it. It's just going to ease it out just a little bit, but still not perfect. Drag this out even more, um, just so we don't get that hard stop in the animation. With map animations, generally, you want it to be pretty smooth. Now, there's one thing I didn't do yet, which is on purpose, and that is adding a highlight line, which is something you'd often see in animations like this. I was thinking of adding some lines to these lines that you see right here. The way we're going to do that is simply we have this and I'm just going to hit G to bring up my pen tool and I'm just going to uh, follow the lines with my uh, pen tool. And again, this might be a little bit time consuming, but trust me, it is worth in the end taking your time with these type of things because it is really in the details uh, where you can make your animations shine. I just made a couple pulls. We don't need too many for this this example. We're going to take one of them and open up the contents and then hit add and add a trim pulse and open that up. Keyframe the end, let's say at about two seconds and then go back to about one second and set that to zero. We can even space it out a little bit more if we feel need to. As such, select them and add a the same easing. And then we can go in copy this, go to the first keyframe and select all the other parts and paste them. I'm going to select them all and then I'm going to use motion tools to randomly sequ sequence them, the keyframes. And that's just going to give us a little bit of visual variance in the look. And then we can take them. I'm going to turn on motion blur, which is something I'm not, I don't usually do. That's just going to feather them out ever so slightly to match the motion. Take them, pre-comp them, and I'm just going to name them both lines. Turn on 3D for that layer as well open to view mode. I want to lift it up ever so slightly from the map just to give some extra depth. So if I just take this just ever so slightly and you might have to move the position around mess with the scale since you're messing with the perspective of it and then we can add deep glow and to the deep glow I'm just going to add an expression we're going to do posterized time six and then do a wiggle. Let's do 200 comma point three and that's just going to give a slight flicker to our animation. So having a look at the animation we've done so far, this is what we have. Super simple little animation with some lines, a lot of visual interest, a focus shift, but we're not quite done because there's a little bit of extra size as per usual that we can add to it. So the first part of the source is open up the position of our clouds, alt click in the expression and then do a wiggle. Let's do a 0.3 comma 10 and that's just going to add a little bit of sway to our clouds. So we can right click on the position where we have the expression, copy expression only and command V it on both of the other clouds. And that's just going to give us a little bit of sway. Go back into our main composition, add an adjustment layer, add a transform, do the scale to 101 and then all click the position. We're just going to add a little bit of that camera shake as per usual, add a poster as time and then a wiggle. Let's do a 200 comma three close that up add another one and this one is going to be a posterized time set that to 12 and that is pretty decent now we can go in and add some textures as well we're just going to use some of the standard textures that i've used over and over again 
I'd recommend going to Texture Labs and creating your own. So with our textures in here, they are 4K, the ones I have anyways. I'm gonna scale them down. We're just gonna drag that below our adjustment layers and there we go, we have a sick look. I think I'm gonna decrease the opacity of our paint to about 70. Um, just because we don't want it to be too intense. And that is pretty much all there is to creating a map animation. We covered most of the basics. Put it in 3D layer, added some depth, some details, um, some markings. And this is only a small part of what you can do. You can take this in so many more, more creative ways. You can mask out areas. You can add even more details outside of just the clouds. So it's really just about having fun and experimenting. For now, I think this is a pretty good start on how you can make your first map animation. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you again next week. So peace out.